Fresh air is an intangible force that revives the soul. In our natural state, we can find ourselves living in survival mode. In fact, it's very easy to end up in a stagnant, lifeless state with absolutely no wind in our sails. I believe that every one of us has a longing for more, a longing to experience a breath of fresh air that will blow through every area of our lives. Because when it happens, it literally has the power to change everything. Well, good morning once again, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us and hopping online, whether you're watching on Facebook or gatewayoakley.com. Maybe you're watching on Instagram Live, which is just a brand new platform for us. Wherever you're at, if you're in your living rooms, at home, watching on a TV or on a computer or tablet, we're so glad that you're here. Why don't you take just a second, say hi to everybody, let everybody know that you're watching. If this is your first week with us, we're so glad you decided to hop on. We'd love for you to stick around for the next 30 minutes or so. We think that what we're going to talk about here can really add some value to your life and really put some tools in your tool belt. You picked a perfect week to be here. We're in week number two of a series called Fresh Air. And this really speaks to every single one of us. All of us have been in that place. Some of us are in that today where we just need to be revived. We just need that breath of fresh air. For all of us, all of us are in the same boat. There's times and seasons, parts of our life, they just become, they're just kind of in a slump, just a little bit listless and, and stagnant. We feel like I'm trying harder and I'm trying to move faster and my wheels are spinning maybe faster than ever before, but I'm just not making any prog progress. Some people have said, I just feel like I'm in the doldrums. And last week we said the doldrums, just so we're all on the same page, is this idea here that it's this state where we just feel down. Maybe that applies to you. We feel discouraged. Maybe that describes you. Or I just feel depressed. I just don't feel like myself. And we can get to that place really easily. The great news is, though, if you're in that place, you don't have to to stay there. You don't have to stay there where there's no breath and there's no movement, there's no air. But it can happen to all of us in different areas of our life. For some of us, it's our marriage and relationship. There's just no life, there's no energy. For some of us, maybe it's our career. And for some of us, maybe it's our spiritual life. When we speak to God and when we interact with religious experiences, there just doesn't seem to be any life. I'm just going through the motions. And what we said last week is we think that there are some choices that all of us can make, that we can choose to go a different route to get some fresh air and to get some wind in our sails. And that's what I want for all of us as we go into this series. Our launching off scripture for this whole series is in Deuteronomy. And this says this, that this day, so today you've got to do this. I'm going to call heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I've set before you some choices. Life and death, blessings and curses. We could say fresh air and the doldrums, and then he gives us the answer to the test. He says, I want you to go ahead and choose life, and that's what I want for you. I want you to choose life. I want you to choose that fresh air, that, that breath of God to put some wind into your sails so that you and your children may live. And so last week we said the choice that you can make, nobody can make it for you. I can't make it for you. You have to choose for yourself. If you want that breath of fresh air, before you do anything else, just fall in love with Jesus. That we all gravitate towards doing more and trying to behave our way to God. But what the New Testament shows us is that we can just fall in love with Jesus. And when we fall in love with Jesus, he begins to change us, not from the outside in. He doesn't start with our behavior. He doesn't start with making us do or not do things. He starts with our heart. He starts with the internal part of us. And so I just want you to fall in love with Jesus and watch what happens in your life. And today's choice, I think especially in the season that we're in today, is so, so important because I'm going to be honest with you, you guys, I'm concerned. I'm worried because to me, as I look at social media, as I look at media, posts on, online, watching the news, as I interact with people, I see probably the same thing you see, that negativity is at an all-time high that attitudes are at an all-time low. Everybody seems to be assuming 
the worst. People are out to get other people, people attacking other people, that if you don't believe the way that I believe, then you must be less than me. If you see the world through a different lens, if you're different than me, then you must be worse than me. And it's just negative, 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 bad attitudes. And I'm, cons- I'm, I'm, I'm legitimately concerned about the, the negativity that's going on in the world. But we're not the first people to experience that. In fact, when Paul was writing to his mentee, Timothy, he said that, that in these last days, something's gonna happen. Now, now so people have, have said, are we in the last days? Jesus promised that there's gonna be a time when he returns, the end of days, the last days. People said, is, is this part of the last days? The answer is it could be, nobody knows. It might be, it might not be. But Paul, when he was writing to Timothy, he said, there's some things that you can watch out for, and you might just look to see if you can recognize these in our world. Mark this, there's gonna be terrible times in the last days. Then he gives us some things to watch out for. People will be lovers of themselves. Well, I think that we can all agree that that's happening, that we live in a me first society, that it's all about what can I get for me, and I don't really care about you lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents. And then he talks about these four things that I really wanna focus on this morning, these four uns ungrateful, unholy, without love, or we could say unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good. And I think that if we're honest, we can all find ourselves in that condition. But the great news is, if you'll stick with me for the next half hour or so, even if that's the condition that we find ourselves in today, I believe that we can adjust it, I believe that we can move beyond it, and we can get this thing turned around. We can put some fresh air into our sails, and we can begin to change our attitude, and as we change our attitude, I begin to experience that life that I think that God once for all of us, but again, before we can change some things, we've gotta recognize some things and to be honest with ourselves. So just right there where you're sitting, don't tell anybody, don't announce it, but I just want you to just kinda do a self-inventory. Do you find yourself in any of these scenarios? Here's our first one, ungrateful. Man, I'll be honest, I I find myself there sometimes. Maybe you can relate, that we get so focused on what do I want that I forget all the things that I have, that we can get so focused on what's next and what more can I get that I forget about what's right here. A new phone comes out and all of a sudden my old phone is junk and I've gotta get the new. And they come out with the new car and a nicer house or this type of backyard and all those, and none of those in and of themselves are bad things. Those are fine, good things until they become our focus and we're ungrateful for what we have. Now, back in the day, some of you don't remember this. Back in the day, I remember getting my first Walkman. Shout out to the Walkman where we had our cassette tapes. I was a Stephen Curtis Chapman guy. Come on, somebody. Stephen Curtis Chapman, go west, young man. And I had the cassette tape and I put it in my Walkman and all of a sudden, I wasn't confined to my house. I wasn't confined to the car to listen to music. I could be walking down the road with my headphones and just thinking I am the man because I had my Walkman. And then, guys, I mean, technology took it to a new level where you could have a CD, a CD, and not only did you buy CDs from the store, you could make your own CD. You could make the mixtape, and you'd put it in, and you'd be walking, but you had to be really careful. You had to walk really smoothly, or else it would skip, and it would ruin the whole CD, and it was like, and now here we are, millions of songs at our disposal, wireless headphones. We've come a long ways, and yet we so easily get caught up in What's the next thing? What don't I have? We can be ungrateful, but here's kind of what I think we all intuitively know. Sometimes in the more, there can actually be less. Sometimes in the getting more, there's less peace. Sometimes in the pursuit of more, there's less contentment. Gallup does a poll every year. And several years ago, when the economy was at all-time highs and everybody was doing great, they took a poll of how content or not content our people. And a couple years ago, they found that people are more miserable than they've ever been, even though on the outside, the economy and everything is looking good. And they're more miserable than they've ever been at any other time they've taken that survey. Why? Ungrateful. 
I am so focused on what I don't have that I can't stop and appreciate what I do have. Maybe you can see that. I can see that in myself sometimes. You ought to be honest with yourself. Do you sometimes see ungratefulness in yourself? But Paul doesn't stop there. He says not just ungratefulness, but, but unholiness. Unholiness is I know what the right thing to do is. I just don't care. I know what's good and right. I know what's bad and wrong. I just don't care. I'm just going to do what I want to do. I'm going to do what feels good for me right now. And the challenge with unholiness is not so much about destroying your relationship with God because, man, his mercies are new every morning. He's rich in mercy. His forgiveness and his love and his grace to us is without end. But the challenge with unholiness, it can actually destroy us. That because of unholy decisions, choosing what I want instead of what God wants, it can cause us to carry around some regret. Some of us today are wearing the scars and wearing the regret of choices that we made a year ago or 10 years ago. There's things that we'll never get back, things that will never be able to be in our life again because of unholy choices. Some of you had the air sucked out of your life, the wind sucked out of your sails as a child because some adults' parents made unholy choices and the life that they lived affected your life and you're still carrying that around today. We can easily move into unholiness and not only that, he says there's ungratefulness, there's uh, unholiness and then we can just be unloving. I mean, isn't it so true that we see that in our society? That I'm not interested in other people. It's a me first society that whatever I want, whatever feels good to me, and if I have to step on your neck to advance myself, then that's no problem. How can I use you for my benefit? But what we see in the New Testament is that is exactly the opposite of what God calls us to, that God doesn't want our heart to be in that condition because, yes, being unloving hurts the people around you, but being unloving also hurts your heart. It misses you up. It hardens your heart. You begin to build up walls. You begin to keep people out. And as you do that, it will suck the life right out of you. Is that your life? Can you relate? Can you relate to keeping people at an arm's distance? If that's you, it's possible that you're living a life that God wants you to live a better one, that God wants to put some breath of fresh air into your life. And then the last one that Paul talks about is unforgiving. This is a big one, I think, for all of us. That we've all had people do us wrong. We've all had people let us down, hurt us, say they would, but they didn't. And it's easy for us to carry those things around with us. And sometimes maybe we think, well, I'm just punishing the other person by holding this against them. But again, it's really just sucking the life out of you. It's hurting you. And the problem with being ungrateful and the problem with being unholy and the problem with being unloving and the problem with being unforgiving, if I could just be a little bit bold this morning, is the problem is really not the people that are around you. The problem is your spiritual enemy, the devil. And he wants to suck all of the life out of you. He wants to push you down and hold you down and weigh you down. He is trying to destroy you. He wants to pollute your heart and to weigh you down. But again, I think that there's a better way. Here's our big idea for today, that your ability and my ability, all of us together, to get a breath of fresh air is actually more up to you than you may realize. It's not up to your circumstances. It's not up to your job or your family. Today, I'm going to put before you the choice, life and death, blessing and cursing, fresh air or the doldrums. Here's the answer to the test. Go ahead and choose life because that's what Jesus wants for you anyway. One of most Jesus' most famous phrases is this, that the thief, the devil, your spiritual enemy, he comes and he wants to steal, kill, and destroy. You might not have known this, but the devil has a plan for your life. And he wants to do everything he can to steal every part of your life that he can, to kill every part of your life that he can, and to destroy every part of your life that he can. But Jesus said, I've come to do something way better. I've come to give you life, and not just life, life to the full. I think it'd be easy for us to say that Jesus came to give us fresh air, that he came to give us breath, that he came to give us that, ah. <sighs> I can breathe again. Isn't that what you want anyway? Isn't it true that sometimes we chase 
things and we try to achieve and climb the corporate ladder and buy our way into that peace and into that contentment and into that breath of fresh air. And maybe for a little bit it works. Maybe for a little bit we think, now I finally have arrived, but that soon fades. What I think that we can do is to make some choices regardless of circumstance. It's not up to anybody else. It's up to you that you can choose some things And as we choose those things, first we fall in love with Jesus. And today we're going to talk about choosing some different attitudes. And by the end of this, my hope and my belief is that you're going to feel and experience that breath of fresh air. It starts, though, at the heart. Solomon said it this way, that a cheerful heart, that's what we want. Man, it's good medicine. But a crushed spirit, it dries up the bones. Now, some of us are in that place where it's cheerful heart. The life is good. Things are going okay. But so many of us, we're experiencing that that just pressing down, that crushing. It just feels dry. I just feel discouraged. You picked the perfect day. We're going to talk about how do we get some fresh air. Then Nehemiah, he said this, the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's what I want to get us to, that the joy of God that is not dependent on your circumstances. Joy is a choice just like your attitude is a choice. Happiness depends on your happenings and what's going on around you. Joy is a choice. And Nehemiah said that when we have the joy of the Lord, that actually strengthens us. It builds us up. Now, for for some of us, let's be honest, man, if the joy of the Lord was our strength, we could get mugged by a butterfly. We just don't have the joy. We don't have the strength, but it can all change today as we make some choices. So I'd love for you to write a couple things down. I've got four choices that I want you to make. And again, my hope for you, if you'll stick around with me, if you'll apply these to your life, you're going to experience that (sighs) wind, breath. But you've got to make the choices. Here's the first one. Every day you've got to do it. Make the choice every day. What's true for all of us is you've probably at some point in your life made some choices. You've made some choices today I'm going to have a good attitude. Today, I'm going to look for the good. Today, I'm going to be positive, but then things keep happening, and challenges keep getting thrown in your way, and so you've got to keep making the choice. Day after day, hour after hour, I keep making the choice. I am going to be positive. I'm going to have the right attitude, because here's what's true for all of us. Your attitude will not take care of itself. That left to its own devices, my attitude is always going to go towards negativity. My attitude is always going to look for the worst in people and see the worst in circumstances when left to its own devices. If I just let go of the steering wheel of my attitude, it always veers towards negativity. But what we have to do is decide every day, I'm grabbing the steering wheel and I'm going to pump the brakes of my attitude and I'm going to direct it, I'm going to steer it to a positive place because if it doesn't, You're going to go to negativity, and negativity is going to suck the life out of your life. And so we make the choice every day, and then sometimes you're going to have to make it in the morning, and then at lunchtime, and then at 2.30, and then at 5.30, and then at bedtime, and go to sleep and make it all over. Again, somebody said it this way, that life is actually 10% of what happens to you, and 90% of how you respond to it. You see, there might not be anything in you that wants to do this, that wants to choose a good attitude, but that's why it's a choice. It's not based on a feeling. It's not based on what's going on around me. It's a choice. I'm waking up today and I'm gonna have a good attitude. I know social media might go to negative. I know that the news media might go to negative. I know the people around me are always looking at what's going wrong instead of what's going right, but they can do whatever they're going to do. I'm choosing for myself, no matter what they do, I am going to choose the right kind of attitude. I I had to do this this week. I I was kind of having a bad day, hadn't slept very good, and just kind of had a rough day, and maybe you've experienced this. I kind of felt like I deserved it. I just kind of felt like I deserved to have a a bad attitude. Just give me a little bit of space. I'm in a bad mood. I just have a bad attitude. Just give me a little bit of room. I deserve to feel the way that I do. And I just started to feel sour, and I started to see the negative, and I got down, and I got discouraged, and it didn't take very long for that life 
to get sucked out of me. That's why Hebrews said it this way. Hey, throw it off. Throw it off. Taylor Swift, the great theologian that she is, she told us, shake it off, shake it off, shake it off. Hebrews said the same thing. Throw all that stuff off. Throw off everything that hinders. All that stuff that ties you down. All the things that try to hold you back. And sin that so easily entangles. And hey guys, let's run with perseverance. The race that's marked out for us. Do you know how you run with perseverance? You've got to have some breath. You've got to have some fresh air in your life or this race that you're running is going to be long and you're going to get tired and you're going to get weary. You're going to just have to decide every day when I wake up, I'm choosing to find the positive. I'm going to choose to look for the good. I'm going to build people up, not tear people down. I'm going to be somebody that puts life into people, not sucks life out of people. And you might have to redecide at lunch. You might have to redecide at dinner. But every day, there's the choice life, death, blessing, cursing, fresh air, the doldrums. And it's up to you not up to your circumstances. There was a story that I read about this family that was moving their elderly mother into a nursing home. Maybe some of you have experienced that with all of the angst and the stress and all of the different emotions that are happening with that. And so they were being really gentle with their mother and they got her into a room and got all of the pictures put in just the right place and they gathered around their mom as they were getting ready to leave. And they said, mom, do you like your room. And I loved what the mother said. She said, this happiness is something you decide ahead of time. Whether I like my room or not doesn't depend on how the furniture is arranged. It's how I've arranged my mind. Now guys, we can learn something from that. That the furniture in your life is occasionally going to be arranged in a way that you don't want it to be arranged. You're going to have some bad days. You're going to get some bad news. But you can choose ahead of time, this is how I've arranged my mind. Things might not be going right. Things might not be going the way that I want them to go. But I've pre-decided I'm going to have a good attitude. Let me read this prayer to you here. I I, I saw this uh, the other day, and some of you have prayed this earlier this week. I loved it. Here's the prayer. Dear Lord, so far today, I'm doing all right. I haven't gossiped, lost my temper, been greedy, grumpy, nasty, selfish, or self-indulgent. I have not whined, cursed, or eaten any chocolate. However, I am getting ready to get out of bed in just a few minutes, and I'm going to need a lot more help after that. Can anybody say amen to that? I've been there. Some of you ought to just say in the chat room right there, me, if that's a prayer that you've prayed maybe this week. But my hope for you, it's a choice that you're going to make every single day. But that's not the only choice. Here's the second one if you're taking notes, that we ought to just develop a high appreciation for life. You see, all of us view the world through a lens. All of us look through the world through a particular set of this is how I view things. Some of us are a little bit more cynical. Some of us are a little bit more optimistic. Some of us see the glass half full. Some of us see the glass half empty. Some of us say as long as the glass has Dr. Pepper in it, I don't care if it's half empty or half full, just give me the glass of Dr. Pepper. But we all see the world in a certain way. My hope for you is that you'll just develop this high appreciation for life. The Apostle Paul had a terrible life. Life was not kind to him. Shipwrecked, beaten, put into prison, falsely accused, eventually killed for his faith in Jesus. And yet look at his attitude. He says this, yeah, I'm sorrowful, yet I'm always rejoicing. I might be poor, but I'm making other people rich, having nothing and yet possessing everything. Now, wouldn't you like to be around a person like that. You see, I don't think that you could have a bad day around Paul. I think if you came in whining and complaining and just feeling self-pity, I think Paul would put his arm around you and say, hey, you're going to make it. You can do it. Tomorrow's going to be better. Just put one foot in front of the other. We would all love to be a fr- have a friend like Paul. Here's what I want to lead you to this morning. You can be that person. You can be the person that says, yeah, I'm- go back for me. You can be the person that says, yeah, I might be sorrowful, there's some sorrowful things happening, but I'm still gonna go ahead and rejoice. 
Yeah, I might be poor, but because of my life, I'm gonna pour into the life of other people. I'm going to build other people up. I'm gonna push other people to go further, faster. Might I not have everything I want, and yet I really possess everything. In other words, it's just a choice. Am I going to be a type of person that puts wind and life into other people's sails, or am I gonna be a person that sucks it out? Am I going to be a bringer of life, or am I going to just bring the whole office or the whole home down the fastest way how do i develop this high appreciation for life the fastest way is to just be grateful that i just choose ahead of time i'm grateful for what i have i'm not going to look at what i don't have i'm not going to look at what i wish i had i'm not going to look at what my neighbors have i'm not going to look at what could be should be would be i'm going to be grateful for what i have that's what paul said he said this hey give thanks when should i do that paul in everything In all circumstances, this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. That we can choose to be grateful. That we can choose, instead of always looking for what's next, instead of always looking for what I don't have, I'm going to be grateful for what I do. And when I'm grateful for what I have, I develop this high appreciation for life. Yeah, I don't maybe have what he has, but I'm so grateful that I have what God has. Has given me. And so we're making a choice every day. We're trying to get some fresh air. We're developing a high appreciation in life. And then this is a hard one. I'll be honest, this is difficult that we find something positive in everything. Now, this isn't about sticking your head in the sand and just pretending, oh, everything's fine. Oh, no problem. Life is perfect. I don't have any troubles. It's not about that. It's just choosing, even in the negative experiences even in the challenges, instead of automatically going to the negative, I'm going to hunt for the positive. And sometimes you might have to dig a little bit. Sometimes it might not be obvious. It's easy to go to negative. Some people can find something negative in everything. They win the lottery, millions of dollars. Well, can you believe all the taxes I've got to pay on this? Some of us this week, haven't we complained? Well, my goodness, it's so hot outside. My goodness, it's so windy. Oh, look how cold it is. We, we, it's just easy in everything to go to the negative. But what if we just decided, I'm choosing ahead of time. I'm going to look for the positive. See, it's easy to have a good attitude when everything is going good. It's easy to have a good attitude when it's just smooth sailing. But what about having a good attitude when there's some bumps? What about having a good attitude when life isn't going the way that you want it to go? So Paul, he says it this way. Here's what I want you to do. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if there's anything excellent, if there's anything praiseworthy, that's what I want you to focus on. That's what I want you to gravitate to. What we're all going to have to do, because we live in a modern society, that we can see news 24-7, and the news is just the news. Most of it's negative. We can see social media 24-7, and there's a lot of negativity, a lot of people tearing other people down. What we have to do is we just got to retrain our brain. That the world is always going to push us to negative. It's always going to push us to, if they disagree with me, if they see the world differently than me, then they must be worse than me. It's always going to try to get me to, to choose sides and to draw a line in the sand. But what the Apostle Paul says is, what if you look for what is good? What if you look for the better instead of the worse? What if you tried to find the positive instead of automatically going to the negative? You see, there's, there's something bad in every person, but there's something good as well. And we get to choose, what am I going to look for? That in every moment, in every day, in every circumstance, I am the one that gets to choose. Again, I'm in the same boat with you. I can move easily towards negativity. I found myself again this week kind of going there. The kids were kind of driving me crazy. They're just hanging on me. I didn't feel like I had any space. The house that had just been cleaned was a wreck. Laundry was piled high. Dishes were piled high. There was toys all over the driveway. I felt like I had just put them away. It was just a long day. And I found myself saying, oh my goodness, the kids are home. They've been home. I can't believe how long they've been here. This is just such a hard season. But then I pumped the brakes. I remembered, wait, Kyle, I get to choose how I perceive this. I get to choose my perspective. And so then I said, wait, Kyle, oh my goodness. The kids are home. 
The kids are here. Can you believe how much time you get to spend with the kids? That otherwise, without this coronavirus, I wouldn't have had the gift of time with the kids that I have right now. It's the same set of circumstances. It's just how am I going to perceive it? How am I going to look at it? Because what I realized in that moment is toys out all over the driveway and laundry and dishes. It won't be long from now that there won't be any toys in my driveway because my kids will not be at my house. There's not going to be very many dishes in the sink because it'll just be Brandy and I. There won't be a lot of laundry to clean and to fold because it'll just be Brandy and I. Our kids will not be in our life to the degree that they're in our life now. And so the choice is yours. Can you move towards finding the positive? Listen, you might not be able to change your circumstances, but you can change your perspective. The no, you can't make the economy reopen. And you can't get back to normal life right now. But you can change your perspective. Listen, it's easy to be negative. Go for it. But you know what's gonna happen? Some of us, it happened to us already. The life just gets sucked out of us. And some of us are experiencing that just, I feel beat down, I feel worn down, I feel like I'm just, the weight of the world is on my shoulders. My hope for you is that you'll develop that high appreciation for life by being grateful, that you'll choose it every day, and that you'll find the positive in everything. And watch what happens. No, things might not change on the outside, but we're talking about internal change. We're talking about a perspective. We're talking about a choice that I can make regardless of what is going on around me. And then here's the last choice that we make. That, well, let me, before I go there, that everyone... Go ahead, go to that, go ahead, go to that slide for me, Chris. Here's what somebody said. Everyone is either a problem to be avoided or a person to love. It's a choice that we have to make. And friends, I want some fresh air for me and I want some fresh air for you. So let's make the choice. But I can't, I can't make it for you. It's up to you. And then here's our, here's our last choice. Here's what we have to do. That we turn everything ultimately over to God. Because here's what's true for all of us. I don't want to try to tell you something that's not true, you're still going to have some bad days. You're still going to experience some stressful times. This week, you're probably going to have some days that you wish you could get back, you wish you could do over. You're still going to have to work with that group of people. You still might have to live next to that annoying neighbor. You might still be married to that person where you're just not seeing eye to eye with. Those things might not change. You're still going to face challenges. Life is not going to be perfect. This is not some utopia. We have real big challenges in our world, but you have the invitation from a God who loves you that you can turn it over to him. You see, the problem and the mistake isn't having a problem. It's what you do with it from that point. That I think that for so many of us, the reason that we feel so down and discouraged, one reason that we feel lifeless is we're trying to handle our life on our own. We're trying to bear the weight of all of my problems and all of the, the weight of the world on our own shoulders. But here's what the Apostle Paul said. Hey, don't be anxious. Maybe that's your, your verse for today. Don't be anxious about anything. And he doesn't say, don't be anxious because there's nothing to be anxious about. Paul knows better than that. He says, no, don't be anxious about anything, but instead do something different. Instead of just weighing it over and over on your mind, instead of letting it press you down and suck all of the life out of you, in all of those things that you are anxious about, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, with that gratitude, God, I don't have everything I want, but I'm so grateful for all the things you have given me. Present God. Here's some things. I've got some challenges, I've got some stress, I've got some, some situations going on. Present it to God and then here's a promise. What happens? The peace of God, the life of God, the breath of God, that breath of fresh air, which transcends. Why is that happening? Transcends all understanding. Well, it's gonna guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The apostle Peter said it this way, cast, throw all your anxiety all of your stress, all of your frustration, cast it all on him. Why should we do that, Peter? Because your heavenly father cares for you. Your heavenly father loves you and it is his delight to carry your burdens for you. 
He did not design you to carry your burdens on your own. He designed you to live freely and to live lightly. Not this utopia life, but this life that says, when I encounter challenges and struggle and problems, I'm going to immediately rotate and say, God, this is yours. I'm going to live in your peace. I'm going to live in your presence. I'm guilty, and maybe you can relate, that sometimes I take the advice of Peter, that I cast my cares on God, but because I can be a little bit impatient, I say, hey, God, uh, you're no, no, you don't seem to be taking care of this problem for me. You don't seem to be solving this quite as quickly as I would like you to solve it. And so I take my problem back and I try to solve it on my own. And then I'll cast it to God again and say, oh, God, could you fix that for me? And I, I, I get out my stopwatch. Uh, you haven't fixed it. I think I'll take that. I think I'll take it back. But here is what I would love to encourage myself and maybe you as well, that your problem can't be your problem and God's problem at the same time. You're gonna have to choose. Is it God's problem to solve or is it my problem to solve? Is it my weight to carry or is it God's weight to carry? Is it my burden to bear or is it God's? You're going to have to decide. I have to decide who is going to be the carrier, you or God. It's a choice. Last week we said that we need to choose to just fall in love with Jesus. This week, I want to encourage you to choose a Christ-like attitude. That attitude that says, I'm going to look for the good in everything. The attitude that says, I'm going to develop that high appreciation for life. That attitude that says, I'm going to make the choice not just once, but I'm going to make it every day. I'm going to watch my attitude because my attitude won't take care of myself. And then I choose, I choose, I choose to give everything, to turn everything over to God. And so as we close this week, I would love to just give you a prayer to pray. I don't know what your prayer life looks like or doesn't look like. Some of you might be like I have been and certainly in in times where I just don't know what to pray or how to pray. Can I just give you a prayer for your week? May these, this is one of the first verses that I ever memorized as a kid. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Friends, if you would pray that every morning, I think you'll begin to get some fresh air. As you choose to be grateful, as you choose to watch your attitude, as you choose to pump the brakes on negativity and on cynicism and on assuming the worst about things, you're gonna experience life. That's what Jesus wants for you. The devil, he wants to move you to negativity, to pessimism, to cynicism. Why? So that he can weigh you down because he's got a plan for your life. Steal, kill, and destroy. But God has a plan for your life as well. And it's life and life to the fullest. That's what I want for you. And so as we pray this morning, what I would love for you to do, if I can include you in this prayer, that if you're just kind of feeling the burdens today, if you just feel like you're weighed down with life, if you just feel like you're spinning your wheels and you just can't catch your breath right there in that little chat room, I just want you to type two letters, me, and just put in her. Who am I praying for? Go ahead right now, right there in that chat room, whether you're watching on Instagram or on Facebook or on gatewayoakley.com, just go ahead and type me. We wanna be praying for you. We wanna be praying that the breath and the life of Jesus invade your life. Let's all pray together. Jesus, we are so grateful that you came to give us life and life to the fullest. And I'm praying for every single person that right now wants to be included in this prayer, that your life would invade their life, that they would begin to make some choices, that they would choose every day to be wary and to be careful of their attitude, that they would choose every day to develop that high appreciation for life by being grateful, that they would choose every day to find the positive instead of leaning towards the negative. And for some people, Lord, I'm I'm praying that they would have the faith to turn over their problems to you and that the breath of God that fresh air that we all so desperately crave would find them this week, even right now, as we're praying. Lord, I pray for those that are anxious right now, for those that are stressed, for those that are just feeling like they're at the end of their rope with no light at the end of the tunnel, and I'm praying for your perfect 
peace to invade their living rooms, their bedrooms, their cars, wherever they might be listening and watching, that your peace would flood their life. Not because circumstances on the outside has changed, but because of your love and your grace and your mercy towards us, that we would have a peaceful heart in uncertain circumstances. That was what I'm believing for all of us. And Lord, our prayer this week collectively is may the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable to you because you are our Lord, you are our rock, and you are our Redeemer. In your name that we pray, amen. Hey guys, we're gonna continue next week with this series. We want you to have this breath. We want you to have that wind in your sails and we believe that it's possible. Hey, if you love your church, if this church adds value to your life, I would love for you to consider giving to your church. There's a couple ways that you can do that. The easiest way is that you can text uh, your gift. Yeah, you can pull out your phone and just text this number, 785-302-9118. So many people are doing this. It's so simple, especially after the first time you develop a, or set up an account, and then you can just type that phone number in, save it as a contact, online giving, and you just type in the amount that you want to give to the message, send. It's as easy as that. If you'd rather, you can go on to your computer, gatewayoakley.com slash giving, and it'll pull up the website. You can give from there. We have needs as a church, even during this time where we can't be meeting Physically, the mortgage still needs pay. We still need to pay electric, all those things. And your faithful and generous support makes it possible. And I'm believing that as you're faithful and as you're generous, God's going to supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. The next announcement that I have for you is something so fun. Tonight, we're just going to try something. No idea how it's going to work exactly. But tonight, we want you to hop on Zoom and we want you to play a couple rounds of bingo with us. It's totally kid friendly. And so here in a little while on our event page, you'll see a link that you'll be able to do two things. You'll see the link to the Zoom meeting where you can type in the address and the password so that you can hop on your computer, on your phone, iPad, whatever that looks for you. And then there's going to be a separate link that you can click on as many times as you want to for many people as are playing. And you can get a customized bingo card. And maybe you've got three kids. Everybody can play. And we'll play two or three rounds. And so you can print off or you can just keep there on your computer several of those bingo cards. It's going to be at 7 o'clock tonight. We have to be socially distant, but we can still stay connected. And we would love to just have some fun. There's no spiritual reason for doing this. We just want to get together digitally and just have a little bit of fun. So I'd love for you to log on at seven o'clock tonight, play a little bingo with us for a half hour or so. It'll be a great, great time. And then on Tuesday night, something that is quickly becoming one of my favorite things that we do. A lot of people are being built up for it. Tuesday night worship and prayer, 7.30. It'll be on both gatewayoakley.com slash live and on Facebook right at 7.30. We have about 20, 25 minutes worth of prayer and worship and just lifting up the name of Jesus and it adds life to our life. Man, we wanna just not just encourage you and build you up during Sunday morning, but we wanna do that during the week and so that's one of the ways that we're doing that. We'd love for you to stay connected with us. What, we look in, what we're looking at uh, according to where the governor is kind of pointing the state of Kansas is we're looking at probably the middle of June to being able to meet here again. Of course, all of that is, you know, could change. It could come earlier. It could come sooner. We, we don't know. But right now, that's kind of where we're planning for. And so let's just keep connecting here online, uh, digitally on Sunday mornings and all those things. But man, until we're able to meet again, we're just going to keep doing what we're doing. We're just going to keep building each other up. We're going to keep pouring life into each other until the day, that glorious day, where we're able to meet again. Until I'm able to see you, hopefully tonight at 7 p.m. for bingo, may the Lord bless you, may he keep you, may he lift up his face upon you, and give you great, great peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day. We'll see you soon.